Our next goal is to generalize notions and concepts of graph signal processing to graphons. We start with the definition of Fourier transform for graphon signals. By definition, a graphon W is a bounded and symmetric measurable function. That makes it possible for us to associate with it the graphon shift operator TW, which is a self-adjoint Hilbert-Schmidt operator. This operator is such that when applied to the signal X, it produces the signal TWX whose value at V is the integral of the product between the kernel of the operator and the function X. From this definition, we conclude that the operator TW is bounded. This is because the kernel, the graphon W, is bounded. We also conclude that the operator, operator TW is self-adjoint because the graphon W is symmetric. When given operators of this type, we can define eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. We say that the function phi from the interval 0, 1 to the real numbers is an eigenfunction of TW with associated eigenvalue lambda if, after applying the graphon shift operator TW to the function phi, we retrieve a scaling of the original function. Thus, at the, as the name suggests, an eigenfunction is a generalization of the concept of eigenvectors to a functional space. A graphon shift operator, operator TW has an infinite but countable number of eigenvalue eigenfunction pairs lambda i phi i. This is to be contrasted with the fact that the graphon takes values on the interval 0, 1, which is uncountable. This property, namely that the eigenvalues are countable, will prove very important in our theory. For future reference, we observe that we assume the eigenfunctions to be normalized to unit energy. That is, the L2 norm of the eigenfunction phi sub i is equal to 1. The eigenfunctions phi i of the graphon shift operator TW form an orthonormal basis of the space L2 of 0, 1. That property will be fundamental to construct a graphon Fourier transform capable of decomposing a graphon signal on the basis made up by the eigenfunctions of the graphon shift operator, as we will see in a few minutes. At this point, it seems important to observe that since the kernel of a self-adjoint Hilbert-Schmidt operator can be decomposed in the operator basis, we can thus decompose the graphon W in the basis of eigenfunctions of the operator TW. In particular, we can rewrite W as a sum over the product of an eigenvalue lambda i and associated eigenfunction phi i. That is similar to the eigenvector decomposition of a graph shift operator S which, as we have seen earlier in the course, can be decomposed as the product between a matrix V made up by the eigenvectors of S and a diagonal matrix lambda containing the eigenvalues of the graph shift operator. As we said, the graphon shift operator to W is self-adjoint, symmetric, and defined on the unit interval. That implies that the eigenvalues of a graphon are real and lie on the interval minus 1, 1. We choose to order eigenvalues with negative indices j in decreasing order and positive indices j in increasing order. As we show in the figure, the eigenvalue lambda 1 is the largest positive eigenvalue. As we increase the index, we move towards smaller positive eigenvalues. The eigenvalue lambda minus 1 is the largest negative eigenvalue. As we decrease the index, we move towards smaller negative eigenvalues. All positive eigenvalues have a positive index and all negative eigenvalues have a negative index. The most important point for us to observe about the eigenvalues of a graphon is that they accumulate at a point at the point lambda equals zero. That is, the eigenvalues converge to zero as j tends to plus or minus infinity. And this is the only point of accumulation for eigenvalues. A consequence of this fact is that for any constant c that we fix, the number of eigenvalues lambda j that have absolute value larger than c is finite. Another important property to point out is that all eigenvalues that are not zero have finite multiplicity. As we can see, graph forms as the limit objects of convergent graph sequences, it is not unreasonable to expect the eigenvalues of a convergent graph sequence to converge to the eigenvalues of the limit graphon. This result is formalized in the following theorem. 
According to the theorem, if a sequence of graphs Gn converges to a graphon W in the homomorphism density sense, then if we take the limit as n tends to infinity of the ratio between an eigenvalue lambda j of Sn and n, that is equal to the eigenvalue lambda j of the limit graphon W which corresponds to the limit as n tends to infinity of the eigenvalue lambda j of the graphon induced by gn, which holds for all j. That is, the theorem states that for any convergent graph sequence gn, the eigenvalues lambda j of the graph shift operator fn converge to the eigenvalues lambda j of tw, with tw the graphon shift operator associated to the limit graphon w. According to the previous theorem, for any convergent graph sequence, the eigenvalues of the graph in blue converge to those of the limit graphon in red. Note that, as expected from our earlier analysis, the eigenvalues of the graphon accumulate around zero, which does not hold for the eigenvalues of the graph. More precisely, convergence of the eigenvalues holds in the sense that there exists some n zero such that for every n larger than n0, the absolute value of the difference between the eigenvalue of the graph shift operator of Gn and the eigenvalue of the limit graphon is less than or equal to some epsilon. But the value of n0 for which convergence holds is different for each j. Thus, the convergence of the eigenvalues is not uniform. The decomposition of the graphon on the operator's basis allows us to rewrite the graphon shift operator TWS as sum over the product between an eigenvalue lambda j, the associated eigenfunction phi j, and the integral of the product of that eigenfunction phi j and the original graphon signal x. The integral terms in that expression correspond to inner products x phi j between the signal and a particular eigenfunction which we can see as a projection of the original graphon signal x over that particular eigenfunction. But we saw that the eigenfunctions of a graphon shift operator form a complete orthonormal basis of L2. Thus, those inner products can provide a complete representation of the original graphon signal x on the basis of the graphon shift operator. The change of basis without loss of information about the signal is what we call the graphon Fourier transform. Similar to how a graph Fourier transform decomposes a graph signal into the eigenfrequencies of the graph shift operator. Given the motivation for the definition of a graph Fourier transform, we now proceed to define that concept formally. The graph Fourier transform or WFT of a graph signal X can then be defined as another graph signal X hat defined over the operator's basis where each component x hat j of that signal corresponds to the component of the signal associated to a particular frequency defined by the eigenvalue lambda j and can be computed as the integral from 0 to 1 of the product between the original graphon signal x and the corresponding eigenfunction phi j, with lambda j the eigenvalues and phi j the eigenfunctions of the associated graphon shift operator Tw. Since the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions are countable, the graphon Fourier transform x hat can always be defined. Naturally, we next define an inverse graphon Fourier transform that maps signals defined on the graphon shift operator's basis back to the original domain. The inverse graphon Fourier transform, or the IWFT, of a graphon signal x hat can then be defined as the sum over the countable indices j of the products between the component of x hat corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda j and the associated eigenfunction phi j with lambda j the eigenvalues and phi j the eigenfunctions of the associated graphon shift operator tw. Since the eigenfunctions phi j form a complete orthonormal basis of L2, we can see that the inverse graphon Fourier transform retrieves the original graphon signal x without loss of information. Hence, the IWFT is a proper inverse of the graphon Fourier transform.